Bueno, es, es un honor presentar al profesor Vitrisco eh, de la Universidad de Los Andes, Colombia. Eh, quería comentar unas pocas palabras antes de que el profesor eh, comience con la exposición. Eh, profesor Vitrisco, yo lo, lo he conocido durante varios años atrás en diferentes encuentros que hemos tenido, sobre todo en los llamados simposios latinoamericanos de lógica. Eh, el profesor Vitrisco es un reconocido matemático que trabaja en, en, en teoría de conjuntos. Y bueno, es un placer, un honor para mí eh, entrarlo en esta, en, en, en esta charla. Bueno, el profesor va, va a exponer el, la charla de, denominada Topological Ramsey Spaces, Space of Partition. Eh, un placer, Carlos. Gracias. Bueno, quisiera comenzar agradeciendo a los organizadores del Congreso por haber logrado eh, esta re magnífica reunión y eh, les doy las gracias por darme la oportunidad de hablar acá. Eh, quisiera saber si se me oye bien. Muy bien. Entonces, mi eh, charla se centrará en el estudio de una propiedad combinatoria que eh, surge a partir del de teorema de... Oh, I'm, I'm speaking in Spanish because Alejandro was speaking in Spanish, but I think I should speak in English. <laughs> so uh, I, will, I will talk about Ramsey theory, which has its origin in Ramsey's combinatorial theorem of 1930, and has developed in many interesting uh, directions. Um, I will center or focus on the study of irregularity property of subsets of, re of the set of real numbers or subsets of some other spaces, which we will call topological Ramsey spaces. We will examine two examples of Ramsey spaces. The Prototype example is what has been called the Elentok space, which is the space of infinite subsets of the set of natural numbers with the relation of containment and an approximation function, which I describe here. So it's a function from the cross product of the set of infinite subsets of n and the natural numbers. So given an infinite set and a natural number, this function assigns to this pair the first n elements of the set m when m is listed in increasing order. The second example that we will discuss is the space of equivalence relations on the set of natural numbers with infinite quotients or identifying equivalence relations with partitions. This is the space of partitions of the set N into infinitely many pieces. We will talk about this space later. First, I will... Uh, recall what uh, is Ramsey's theorem. Ramsey's theorem can be stated as this. If we have two positive integers, n and k, and we look at the n element subsets of n, the subsets of, or the sets, the finite sets of natural number of uh, size n, and we partition that set into k many parts, then we can find an infinite set of natural numbers such that all of its n element subsets are contained in one of the parts of the partition. There is a very handy, yes, there is a very handy notation due to Rado and Erdos, uh, this arrow rotation, arrow notation. Uh, we won't be using it very uh, much in this talk, but uh, 
when this n is one, then this is just the pigeonhole principle. If we partition the one element subset of natural numbers, which is essentially the same as the set of natural numbers into a final number of pieces, then at least one of the pieces is infinite. This pigeonhole principle is also a, a, an important part of the inductive proof of Ramsey's theorem. Is there any question? Or are there any questions? Well, so uh, a, a description of the general problem of Ramsey theory, the general uh, uh, type of problems that Ramsey theory deals with uh, can be uh, described like this. We have a certain structure, which is this square, this rectangle X, and we partition this structure into finitely many pieces we would like to find a copy of the structure within one of the pieces. Here, copy is something very vague, but we will see uh, what we mean in the examples that I will examine. So for Ramsey's theorem, a copy of the natural numbers is just any infinite set of natural numbers. But we will see a, a more interesting example later. Well, so, <clears throat> Uh, Ramsey's theorem is about partitions of n element subsets of the set of natural numbers. So it's natural to consider partitions of the set of infinite subsets of the set of natural numbers. So given such a finite partition, is there an infinite set of natural numbers so that, such that all of its infinite subsets are contained in the same piece? Well, this question motivates the following definition. A set A, which is a subset of the collection of all infinite sets of natural numbers is a Ramsey set. If there is an infinite set of natural numbers, so that all of its infinite subsets are in the same side of the partition determined by A, A and its complement. So, uh, there is, we say that a, a is Ramsey if there is an infinite H so that all of the infinite subsets of H are contained in A, are elements of A, or all of them are outside of A. Um, it can be shown that there are subsets of N to the infinity which are not Ramsey. Um, uh, the axiom of choice is used for that. And, uh, but if we consider partition into simple sets, for example, simple sets in terms of topology or simply defined uh, parts, then uh, such a partition always admits a um, homogeneous set in this, in this sense. In other words, uh, simple defined sets are rams. Now, let's see what we mean by simple, simply defined sets. Uh, we will give this uh, collection of infinite subsets of N, the topology. Uh, I have to remark that with this metric topology, which uh, uh, is generated by the sets of this form, we have a finite set of natural numbers, small s, and we look at all the infinite sets that have small s as a, an initial segment. Uh, these sets generate a topology, which is actually the, the, the metrizable topology given by the product topology when we give uh, in the discrete topology. So with this topology, um, <clears throat> this space is homeomorphic to the irrationals. So this is the connection with the real numbers. Uh, we can look at it this way. There, we will consider another topology, which is finer and not metrizable, which is called the Ellenthal topology, uh, which has a basis formed by sets defined like this. We have an, a finite set, small s, and an infinite set, a, 
and we look at all of the infinite subsets of n, which uh, are in this uh, basic set. In other words, they start with small s and continue within a. S is an initial segment of B, and B is listed increasingly, and B is a subset of S unit A. This, uh, these sets generated topology, which is called the Ehrentrack topology. And we will consider these topologies to say what a simply defined set is. So, <clears throat> Let's give now uh, the main definition that we will be considering. We say that a subset A of n to the infinity is completely Ramsey if for every Ellen took neighborhood, well, given by S and C, given uh, a neighborhood given by S and C, we can find a smaller neighborhood in other words, a beacon, uh, an infinite subset of C, such that this smaller neighborhood is containing A or it is disjoint from A. If this second possibility always occurs for the set A, we say that A is completely Ramsey mode. So uh, this diagram uh, helps to understand this, I hope. So we have our structure, which is the set of infinite subsets of uh, N, and we have a, in blue a, an elementic neighborhood, and A is the set given by this partition. This is A, and here we have A complement. So A is completely Ramsey. If given any such neighborhood, we can find a smaller one, which is containing A, or containing A complement. Uh, in the early 70s, Galvin and Prickery showed that uh, Borel sets in this metrizable topology are completely Ramsey. So first it's shown that the open sets are completely Ramsey, and then they show that the Ramsey sets for or the completely Ramsey sets form a sigma algebra over this structure. And moreover, if we partition this structure into finitely many pieces which are Borel in the metrizable topology, then there is an infinite set of natural numbers such that all of its subsets, all of its infinite subsets are in one of the pieces. Uh, Silver extended that result to analytic sets, analytic and analytic sets. An analytic set in this context is the image of a Borel set by a continuous function. So there are such continuous images, Borel sets, which are not Borel, and those are, uh, and well, uh, those are. Uh, uh, also analytic sets. Uh, so analytic sets are completely Ramsey. Silver use uh, mathematical logic to, to prove this result. And later, Elento gave a purely topological proof of this result, showing that the completely Ramsey sets and the sets that have the bare property with respect to the element of topology coincide. So uh, I split this result in different parts. Open sets in the element of topology are completely Ramsey. Borel sets in the element of topology are completely Ramsey. The completely Ramsey null sets form a sigma ideal over this structure of infinite subsets of M and this sigma algebra of completely Ramsey sets is close under the of the Sussman operation, and therefore analytic sets are completely Ramsey. Uh, <clears throat> so I need to show that completely Ramsey sets and sets with the bare property are the same collection of 
subsets of the structure we're, we're considering now. And uh, uh, yeah, the main tool to prove this part of the theorem is to show that uh, more dense sets in the Ellenfield topology and meager sets coincide, and they also coincide with the Ramsey null sets. So in an analogous way, as we said before, if we partition our structure into finitely many pieces, each of which has the bare property, then there is a homogeneous set such that all of its subsets are contained in the same piece of the partition. <clears throat> <clears throat> you will see that uh, this Ramsey property can be localized on certain collections of subsets of uh, the set of natural numbers. So a co-ideal on the set of natural numbers is a non-empty collection of subsets of the set of natural numbers whose complement is an ideal of sets. In other words, a co-ideal is a collection of infinite subsets of natural of the set of natural numbers, which is close under supersets, and such that if the if a union of two sets is in the co-ideal, then one of the two sets must also belong to the co-ideal. <clears throat> so the way the Ramsey property is localized on a co-ideal is as follows: we say that a set A subset of our structure is H bare, when H is a co-ideal, if for any element of neighborhood with the infinite part in H, we can find a smaller neighborhood also with the smaller part in H. This means that B is in H and is a subset of C. And this smaller neighborhood has the following property. It's contained in A, or it is disjoint from A. If A is such that the second option always occurs, we say that H is A is H meager or H, uh, well, H meager. Now the Ramsey property is a slight variation of this H bare property. Uh, here for every identical neighborhood, we want to find a smaller neighborhood, which is homogeneous. Well, we say that a set is H Ramsey if for every element of neighborhood, we can find a smaller one with the same uh, uh, first coordinate, with the same stem that is homogeneous. And in the same way, if the second option always occurs, we say that the say is H Ramsey null. Well, we will be particularly interested in co-ideals that are rich in elements. For example, co-ideals that are closed under certain operations. We define the operation of diagonalization. If we have a descending sequence of elements of the co-ideal H, then D, an element of H, is, um, I'm sorry, well, we say that the co-ideal is close under diagonalization. If for any uh, descending sequence, there is a D, which is a diagonalization, and that means that D has the following property. For every element N of D, D above N, the elements of the, the collection of elements of D, which are above N, forms a set which is contained in the nth element of the descending sequence. So in particular, this set D is almost contained in every element of the descending sequence. But when it it is almost contained in this particular more precise way, then we say it is a diagonalization of the sequence. Matthias uh, in the late 70s showed that when the co-ideal H is selective, 
in other words, have this diagonalization property, then the H bear sets and the H Ramsey sets coincide. So <clears throat> he <clears throat> generalized the result of Ellen took to this uh, version of localized bear property and the localized Ramsey property when the selective ideal were localizing on <clears throat> is selected. In this case, also the H meager sets and the H Ramsey null sets coincide. Well, <clears throat> so this is a, a, a quick uh, uh, review of what was done about the Ramsey property for subsets of um, the structure n to the infinity. This <clears throat> has been generalized in an abstract fashion by different people, but perhaps I can stop for a second here and see if there are, uh, ask if there are any questions before I continue. <clears throat> well, so um, Carlson and Simpson and later Todosevic gave a, a, an abstract version of uh, the theory I have just uh, uh, reviewed. So um, we will look at combinatorial structures, which are a set R, <clears throat> um, a quasi order, which in our examples will actually be a partial order, like containment. And, and we will see what is the relation in our other example and an approximation function. So the approximation function looks like this. We have an element of R and a natural number, and we apply this function and we get, we get the nth approximation of A, <clears throat> the set of approximations, uh, um, it's called AR, approximations of the elements of R, and each element of R is actually, um, or can be identified with this, sequence of all of its approximations. Okay, so given such a structure, uh, we can uh, impose uh, some, some properties to make it interesting. Uh, first, we have two uh, simple definitions here. A is an initial segment of B when A and B are, are approximations. If there is an element of the space and two natural numbers with N less or equal to M, and A is the nth approximation of A, and B is the mth approximation of A. The length of an approximation denoted by this is the unique number N, natural number n such that a is the nth approximation for some element of the space. <clears throat> so we will be interested in structures of this form that satisfy a sequence of four actions or four collection of, uh, collections of actions, which I will go uh, through them very quickly because uh, um, I want to get to our second example um, uh, with enough time. So first, the axioms of metrization say that the, uh, this collection of approximations actually uh, can distinguish between elements of the space. If two elements are distinct or different, then there must be some approximation of the first one and the same length of approximation of the second one must all must uh, differ. If two if the nth approximation of A coincides with the nth approximation of B, where A and B are two elements of our structure, then N must be equal to M, and the shorter approximations of A and B must coincide. For every A, the zeroth approximation is always the empty set. Uh, the axioms of finitation 
allow us to <clears throat> identify every element of the structure with the sequence of its approximations. So probably it won't be necessary to read in all detail uh, the finitization actions. Uh, I will go to the next set of actions. And for this, it's convenient to see that we can define uh, basic sets in an analogous way as we did for the elementary space. So given an approximation, small a, the neighborhood defined by a is the set of all elements of our structure such that the nth approximation of a is small a when n is the length of small a. So in other words, brackets a is the set of all elements of the space that start with small a. And the Elentuk neighborhoods are defined in an analogous way. We, uh, for every, every pair, uh, an approximation, small a, and a set of our space R, B, brackets A, B, is the collection of all elements of the space which start with A and are below B in the relation of the structure. Remember, I'll go back uh, a little bit. The structure has a certain relation. So this relation is being used to define these neighborhoods. Uh, this collection of uh, neighborhoods defined by uh, approximations forms a basis for a topology, which we call the metrizable topology of R. And this other collection of sets, the Ellentuk neighborhoods, forms a basis for a finer topology called the Ellentuk topology or the natural topology of R. Natural, because this is a natural topology to consider if we want to study the Ramsey property. Uh, <clears throat> the axioms of amalgamation, uh, well, this is a more technical action, if you want, uh, that allows us to uh, operate with these ap ap approximations in such a way. For example, if we have um, a neighborhood like this, uh, the axiom of amalgamation will allow us to will allow us to suppose that this approximation is actually an initial segment of A. So I will just say that and go on to the last condition we will impose to our structure, which will be a generalization of the pigeonhole principle. And <clears throat> it reads like this, given an approximation, small a, and a set of our structure R, <clears throat> the depth of A in B is how far do we have to go within B, how, how large an approximation of B we need to take to cover small A. So with that idea of depth, we say that uh, if this depth exists so that A is actually covered by some approximation of B, then if we split the set of approximations, which are of length one plus the length of A into two parts, O and its complement, then we can find a homogeneous set. We can find an element of this neighborhood, which is homogeneous in the following way. If we look at all of the length of A plus one approximations of elements of this neighborhood, all of them are in O, or all of them are outside of O. We will uh, consider uh, uh, the, the example, the second example of the talk, which is this example of uh, equivalence relations with infinite quotients. And we will uh, look at this uh, generalized pigeonhole principle more carefully. So we can define in an analogous way what uh, completely Ramsey say, a completely Ramsey set is 
a subset of our structure is completely Ramsey, if for every Ellen to neighborhood, we can find a, small, uh, a smaller one with the same stem, with the same first coordinate, which is contained in X or is completely contained in X complement. And the same way we can define uh, uh, the bare property uh, for the uh, uh, in this abstract uh, context. Okay, so <clears throat> a structure R with this elementic topology is a topological Ramsey space if every bare subset of R is completely Ramsey. And the ideal of meager set coincides with the ideal of Ramsey null sets. The structure is called metrically closed if uh, as a subset of the product space, sorry about this, as a subset of the product space of the sequences of approximations, it is, a clo it is closed. When we identify every element of the space with the sequence of its initial segments. So uh, Todosevic proved a, an abstract version of the Elementor theorem saying that a structure like this, which is metri metrically closed and satisfies the axioms I uh, showed before, then it is a topological Ramsey space. So to have that the Ramsey sets coincide with the bare sets, uh, we only need to satisfy these actions and uh, the space should be closed in the way it was defined a few minutes ago. <clears throat> As for the case of the Olympic space, <clears throat> uh, for any topological space without isolated points, there are sets which are not Ramsey. Well, so this is the uh, panorama of what the abstract Ramsey theory uh, developed by Carlson and Simpson or started by Carlson and Simpson and continued by Todosevich is. So um, <clears throat> for, from this abstract uh, context, we can also uh, prove uh, or, or state in more detail the uh, generalization of Ellington's results saying that the subset of such a structure is Ramsey if and only if it has the bare property or it has the R bare property, which is that any uh, Ellington neighborhood, for any Ellington neighborhood, we can find a smaller one which is contained in the set or is disjoint from the set. Okay, so uh, we will go now to look at another example, but interesting examples of topological Ramsey space have been discovered in the past, say, uh, uh, eight or so years by Natasha Dobrinen, Jose Mijares, Timothy Trujillo, and Stevo Todorsevich. There is a, a, a nice collection of spaces that behave like this. I will centered now in, in one of these spaces and we'll try to describe some recent work done with Julian Cano in Bogota. So this is the space of infinite partitions of the set of natural numbers. Are there any questions? No te oigo Alejandro, I, I can't hear you. Is there any questions? Uh, ah. If you want, uh, Professor Carlos may continue uh, his talk. Well, if there are no questions, so let me let me continue with this uh, space. So our space is now uh, we call it E infinity. It's the collection of all partitions of the set and into infinitely many pieces. The order relation 
that we will consider in this space is defined like this. E is less than or equal F if E is a coarser partition than F. So every piece of E or every class in E is a union of classes in F. <clears throat> Before I define the approximation function, let me say a few words about how will we view, how will uh, we view these partitions? So given a partition of n into infinitely many pieces, we look at the set of minimal representatives or, or the minimal point of each piece of the partition. And we list this set in increasing order. <clears throat> so partition looks like that. This is the first part of the partition, the second part and so forth. And the minimal elements are the ones that uh, determine the order of the parts or the classes of the partition. So let's define the approximation function. Uh, given a partition E and a, natural, and a natural number N, the nth approximation of E is just E restricted to the number Pn of E. Uh, remember that in, in, set, in set theory, it is uh, uh, customary to identify a natural number with the set of its predecessors. So we, if we look at the restriction of the partition E to this set, let me show the picture again. Then we get a partition of the, of, for example, for the fourth approximation, we get a partition of the set of numbers below P4, and that gives us a partition into four finite pieces of the set P4. <clears throat> we can define uh, an order among, uh, the, on the set of uh, approximations. A is less than or equal thin B if these partitions, final partitions A and B have the same domain and A is coarser than B. The study of this space was initiated by Carlson and Simpson in the 80s and was continued later by Pierre Maté and Lorenz Halbison uh, in a series of paper, papers in, uh, that I, I, I just mentioned one of them here, uh, but they, they published uh, several ones uh, with different aspects developing different aspects of the Ramsey theory of the space of partitions. So I, was, I would like to make just one more comment. If we fix an approximation of a partition and we want to find uh, a, an approximation adding one more class, how do we do that? Well, we can do that amalgamating some classes. For example, this class P5, I can amalgamate to some of the previous classes and the same with the class given by P6 and P7. And suppose that the, eight, the, the class with minimal element P8 will remain. So we have to amalgamate it, um, uh, everything between P5 and P7 to previous classes of the partition, previous in this order, and uh, look at what we obtain when we restrict the partition to P8, the number P8, which is the set that will be below, below that number. Okay, so, <clears throat> Uh, we can define the element of neighborhoods now that we know what the approximations are, given an approximation A and a, and a partition F, 
the Ellenfeld neighborhood AF is a set of all partitions which are below F, meaning that they are coarser than F and such that A is the nth approximation of E for some natural number N. <clears throat> Carlson and Simpson proved that this structure with this order and this approximation function satisfies the actions A1 to A4, and therefore, therefore it is a topological Ramsey space. And uh, I just want to mention that the corresponding pigeonhole principle is a very deep combinatorial result, which is not trivial to, to prove. Uh, uh, they gave a proof, and then uh, later on, Fogorsevich gave a, uh, a simplified proof of the pigeonhole pro property using uh, an infinitary version of the Hales Hewitt theorem for uh, variable words. And it's a, well, it's a very interesting combinatorial uh, proof for a very interesting combinatorial result. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, with that, we obtain a, a, a dual Elentuk theorem. Dual because instead of subsets, we're looking at coarser partitions. And uh, we say that a subset of our space is Ramsey. Well, I already defined that, but the, the theorem says that a set of uh, our structure is Ramsey, if and only if it has the bare property with respect to the dual elliptic topology, meaning the topology uh, with this basis. These sets form a basis for this topology. As a corollary of the, uh, of the dual elliptic theorem, we, uh, they obtained a, a, a dual version of the Ramsey theorem and other interesting combinatorial results. Uh, just for the record, I will uh, show you a statement of the dual Ramsey theorem. If we look at partitions into M pieces, partitions into M pieces when M is a positive integer, then uh, <clears throat> if we partition that set into finitely many cases, finitely many pieces, K pieces, then we can find uh, an, then we can find an infinite partition such that all of its amalgamations, all of it, all of the coarser partitions with exactly M pieces are in the same piece of this partition. Uh, but to get this, we have to require that the, the pieces are Borel sets. Mate uh, extended this a little bit, showing that it also holds when these sets are have the bare property. Okay, so <clears throat> uh, the work I've been doing with uh, Julian Cano uh, has two, well, I will mention two results. The first result is a characterization of sets with the Ramsey property in terms of infinite games. Uh, Castanas in the 80s characterized Ramsey subsets of the Elentuk space in, ter in terms of infinite games. We, will, we, we obtained similar results for the space of partitions. So let me describe what the games are. Uh, so we have our structure. Uh, we fix a subset of the structure and a, an Ellen, an Ellen neighborhood, an empty Ellen neighborhood. We fix a, an approximation is zero and we fix an element of the space B0, and we define this game. It is, depends on the set X and the neighborhood. So player one plays 
an element of this neighborhood. So this element of the neighborhood A sub one starts with A zero, then player two extends A zero to A one, adding one more class to, the, to this approximation and chooses a, a partition which is below A one. Then player one chooses an element of this element of neighborhood and so on. They continue playing that way. So the approximations that are built along the way uh, get longer and longer, growing to infinity. So these approximations actually determine one partition that I'm calling here B infinity. We, we can view this as the intersection of all the metric neighborhoods uh, given by uh, these finite approximations. So player one wins the game if this partition belongs to the set X, player two wins the game otherwise. So um, <clears throat> we showed that given such a set X and given a non-empty element of neighborhood, player one has a winning strategy for the game I just described determined by X and the element of neighborhood, if and only if, there is an element of the neighborhood which determines together with small a, a basic set which is contained in X. In other words, player one has a winning strategy if and only if uh, say this set is Ramsey positive. Well, for this particular neighborhood. For this particular neighborhood, we can find a smaller one with the same first coordinate, which is contained in our set. If play, uh, the, the, other part, the other important part of the theorem is that player two has a winning strategy in the game determined by the set X and the neighborhood AM, if and only if, for every element of this neighborhood, there is a, 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 another, an element of the space which is below N and start with A, such that the corresponding neighborhood is disjoint from X. So this is not exactly the uh, symmetrical, uh, A and C are not completely symmetrical, uh, but C, Say, uh, says in, 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 in more colloquial terms that two has a winning strategy if and only if um, uh, our set X is, is Ramsey null, uh, but uh, densely. For every N, we can find an H that uh, gives us a neighborhood which is disjoint from X. And to show C, well, we, uh, had to uh, obtain a, a, a technical combinatorial result uh, about uh, the way these uh, neighborhoods work. And, and uh, I, I will not go into this now uh, because I would like to uh, show you uh, how do we define co-ideals in, in this context and how we uh, localize the Ramsey property and the very property. So to summarize uh, a set, a subset of our space, uh, given a subset of our space, the following two statements are equivalent. The set is Ramsey and for every neighborhood, in a, a, a neighborhood which is non-empty, the game determined by our set and the neighborhood is determined. In other words, 
one of the two players has a winning strategy. If there are no questions about the game or about the uh, technical lemma, then let me just go on to the last part of the talk, which is about co-ideals in the space of partitions. So a subset H of the set of partitions, uh, we, we say it's a co-ideal if it contains the uh, top partition, I mean, the finest partition possible partition of the set of uh, natural numbers in singletons and has this property. If A and B are partitions and A is almost below B, and this means that A is coarser than B, except perhaps for a few uh, final number of, cl of classes. If this holds and A is in H, then B is in H. Uh, the theory of co-ideas of um, the Elentuk space, of the Elentuk space used or to, to prove all the results I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, we use the pigeonhole principle, which is a principle which holds for any infinite set of natural numbers. If we split an infinite set of natural numbers into a finite number of parts, one of these parts is infinite. In this context, the pigeonhole principle is not, uh, uh, cannot be taken from, uh, for granted. So we have to add uh, a pigeonhole principle uh, to the definition of co-idea to make uh, <clears throat> the theory interesting, the theory of co-ideals. So we, we require that the co-ideal satisfies the pigeonhole principle in the following way. If we have an element of the co-ideal and we have a, an approximation of something which is below A, then uh, 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 if the set of approximations, which are one of length, one more than the, the length of small a, and we split it into O and O complement, we can find uh, a partition B in this neighborhood and also within H, which is homogeneous. In other words, all of the approximations of elements of this partition are containing O, or all of them are outside of O. <clears throat> So uh, a, a co-ideal with, uh, which is a collection that satisfies these three properties is also close on their finite changes. Well, a partition is close on the finite changes or, or I'm sorry, a set of partition is close on their finite changes if we take an element of H and we amalgamate a few of, the, of its classes, then we obtain a set which is also in the collection H. So a co-ideal satisfies that it's close on their finite changes and also satisfies the uh, localized version of, uh, of the uh, amalgamation axiom three. Well, I think we can skip that because we, we, don't, uh, we will not uh, use it explicitly uh, in this talk. So, <clears throat> Uh, the space itself is a co-ideal, trivial, because it satisfies all those properties. Uh, an example of a co-ideal which is not, which is properly contained in the in the space, well, uh, we have, for example, the collection of all infinite partitions which have infinitely many finite classes. This is a co-ideal, and the only non-trivial thing to prove is that this collection satisfies the pigeonhole principle. And this is not trivial and it's done, uh, uh, it can be done also uh, the way the pigeonhole principle for the whole space is, is proved using uh, the hales Jewett infinitary version of the hales Jewett theorem. 
Well, <clears throat> we can define selectivity for quideals of our space. <clears throat> First, we have to define what, what a diagonalization is. And one, once we define, this is done in an analogous way, well, with a few uh, adjustments as what we did for the Erentuk space. But once we get the right notion of diagonalization, then we can prove that uh, a quideal, which is close under diagonalizations, which we call a selective quideal, uh, is interesting because the localized version of the H Ramsey property and the uh, localized version of the H bear property that are uh, defined in the natural way uh, coincide. So the set is H Ramsey. If for any neighborhood with the infinite part in H, Here, this neighborhood, we can find a smaller neighborhood with the same stem, with the same A, which is containing X or disjoint from X. And analogous for the bare property, just that in this case, we don't have to keep the stem. We can find a, just a smaller neighborhood, which is homogeneous. So if H is a selective co-ideal, then the set is H Ramsey if and only if it is H bare and the H Ramsey node sets coincide with the H meager sets. Well, just to finish, let me mention that there is a weaker notion than selectivity, which is called semi selectivity, which uh, uh, for the space of uh, the Erentuk space was uh, introduced by Farah in his PhD thesis. Uh, with Jose Mijares, we have defined an abstract version of semi-selectivity. And uh, with uh, Julian Cano, we showed that, uh, let me just go to the uh, theorem. We, I won't define, I won't attempt to define semi-selectivity because it will take uh, more time than I am allowed to use. But if the ideal is semi-selective, then the Ramsey sets and the H, the H Ramsey sets and the H bear subsets coincide, but this uh, second property also implies semi-selectivity. So semi-selectivity is actually equivalent to uh, uh, the Ramsey, the H Ramsey sets and the H bear sets coinciding, and the H Ramsey node sets and the meager sets, the H meager sets uh, form forming the same sigma idea. Well, I think uh, I've used all my time, so I will stop here. Gracias, Carlos. Eh, ahora voy a, a parar la grabación para que puedan hacer las preguntas más libremente, si tienen ganas.